Howdy folks, I do hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, where today, Akito here in HMS Minotaur, the British Tier 10 light cruiser, still very popular, and for good reason, it's capable of putting out an obscene amount of firepower, although like all light cruisers it is extremely vulnerable to large calibre armour-piercing shells, although as a British light cruiser with even less armour than other light cruisers it's vulnerable to armour-piercing shells of any calibre. And that's going to make things particularly interesting for Rikito in this Tier 10 domination battle on the trap map, because the matchmaker has seen fit to grace both teams with five battleships. Yeah, that large calibre armour-piercing, as well as four cruisers, only two destroyers and an aircraft carrier on each team. What makes this battle special, however, and the reason why we're watching it today as our daily World of Warships video, is... And I really do have to be careful here, I don't want to say too much and give it away and spoil the surprise, but it's, it's to do with the ending. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in this battle. A lot of it is completely normal. Aircraft carriers not giving a shit about anti-aircraft firepower, for example. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of that about. Uh, because, of course, the days when aircraft carriers used to take pains to avoid going anywhere near a light cruiser, particularly a light cruiser uh, with the defensive fire consumable, which the Minotaur does not, but the Austin in this battle does. Those days are long gone. We're going to be seeing plenty of that, but it's... And again, I need to be careful that I don't give away the surprise, but I very, very rarely see battles that play out like this. In fact, for the overwhelming majority of you watching this video, what you're going to see in this battle, it might be the first time you've ever seen it happen. Anyway, the action starts quite early in this battle. You can see that, uh, well, the enemy Harugamo has already been spotted by the carrier, because, you know, that's just what they do. I mean, destroyer players do get a lot of stick for suiciding into cap circles right at the start of the battle without paying attention to the consequences of getting lit up and spotted by the carriers and just dying pointlessly in the first few minutes, but the presence of a carrier does make life very, very difficult for destroyers. And the Malta, which is the carrier present on both teams, is particularly nasty against destroyers because of its rocket attack planes that can deliver 40 rockets per strike, and unlike a lot of other carriers, they've got a very, very tight aiming circle and a relatively quick aiming time. Uh, the friendly Shimakaze has gotten his torpedoes off and he's ensuring that he stays as far away as possible not just from any enemy aircraft but also I'm pretty sure there's a Des Moines over there which of course is a radar cruiser. Now the Minotaur could be a radar cruiser but in order to equip radar it would have to give up the smoke screen and as you can quite plainly see Akito isn't feeling quite that brave. Somebody who is feeling quite brave however for no good reason that I can see, is the enemy Montana. What on earth does this guy think he's doing? Now, just because Akito's popped a smoke doesn't mean he's invulnerable. He's sitting broadside onto a Montana there, and the Montana doesn't have to be particularly accurate or lucky to score some devastating citadels by just firing blind into the smoke and following Akito's tracer. So Akito quite conscious that this could easily happen, starts backing up. As he backs up, his rear turrets start getting occluded by the island, so the Montana, guessing correctly that he's just poking around the corner, fires on the corner and narrowly misses. Kito's paying attention though. So now he starts moving forward, clearing the corner, hoping to be able to nail the Montana before he can fire again. There goes the Montana's rear turrets, I think, and again, narrowly misses. The Montana, of course, is doomed, and yep, sure enough, there it is. First kill and the first blood award. I have no idea what that Montana thought he was going to achieve by charging into a cap circle that a Harugamo wasn't brave enough to contest, but hey, he's dead. As is one of the friendly destroyers. As Akito shifts his fire to the Des Moines, and you can see him keep locking the Des Moines up with the torpedo launchers. Minotaur comes with torpedo launchers on each side. He's not trying to torpedo the Des Moines. Obviously not, he's way too far away and he's on the other side of an island. But the torpedo aiming indicator gives him some idea of which way, if at all, the Des Moines is moving, allowing him to much more accurately put shots on a target that he can't actually see. What is everybody doing back there? 
Akito has been asking for some spotting, which is a reasonable request. He's a smoked up, or he... Hang on a minute. Are those Harugamo torpedoes? There's a smoke screen over there. That is the Harugamo. What, what the hell are they aimed at? <laughs> oh, and there's the, the man himself. And here comes the friendly Mecklenburg. What the hell is the point of this? You know, if I was the uncharitable sort, I might suggest that the Mecklenburg got a bit pissed off that Akito was asking for spotting and decided to push him out of... Well, the smoke screen's expired, so it's a little late if that was the intention. Or it could just be that he just doesn't care. But uh, that could have been very dangerous. There's the Harugamo. Again, he's using the torpedo aiming indicator to let him know which way, if at all, the Harugamo is moving. I would suggest, since he's spotted, and the island is providing him with no protection whatsoever from Akito's plunging fire, and he's also exposed to direct fire from the west, that he probably should have started moving long before now. I think we're about to see the loss of the enemy team's second ship. Yep, there he goes. So, the kills are even. Both teams have two kills. Akito starting to attract some unwelcome attention here, although with the death of the Harugamo, he's gone undetected, and he's now capping with the Mecklenburg, um, this cap circle up here at Charlie, with very little chance of the enemy team being able to do anything about it. Although the Mecklenburg is starting to attract an awful lot of fire because he doesn't have light cruiser stealth, so everybody remaining over here is shooting at him. Akito's just chilling out here, because with the enemy team constantly resetting any capture progress from the Mecklenburg, Akito is basically the one flipping this cap circle, and it needs to get flipped because the enemy team have a 100 point lead thanks to taking control of the cap circle down to the southwest at Alpha a couple of minutes ago. So now, with both teams suffering two casualties, the enemy team controlling Alpha down in the southwest, and Akito's team controlling Charlie up here in the northeast, the stage is set for a battle royale for control of Cap Circle Bravo in the middle of the map. Both teams have a carrier for spotting that Cap Circle. Both teams have a surviving destroyer for taking that Cap Circle. Akito's team, you could argue, have the advantage. They have a Shimakaze. It easily has the best stealth of any ship remaining in this battle. And quick as a flash, the friendly Shimakaze heads anywhere other than in the direction of the central Cap Circle at Bravo. It's difficult to blame him, however, for a couple of reasons. First, the surviving destroyer on the enemy team is a Shimakaze too, so the friendly Shimmer doesn't necessarily enjoy a stealth advantage. Also, there's a carrier in play, and the enemy team do also still have a radar cruiser. They didn't manage to finish off the Des Moines. So it's kind of understandable that while everybody is looking at the Shimakaze and then looking at the Cap Circle at Bravo and saying, so, um, after you, <laughs> that friendly Shimakaze is basically saying, hell no, you're the curious ones. <laughs> you can do it yourself. Uh, so it's going to be up to the light cruisers, not just Akito in the Minotaur, but also the friendly Austin. But whatever they do, they're going to have to do it fast because the enemy team, presumably the enemy Shimakaze, as the friendly carrier was busy elsewhere, has managed to flip that cap circle completely uncontested. So the enemy team are now surging further ahead on points. Akito having a quick look around to see just exactly what the hell everybody else is doing. Which, honestly, is a very good question. There are way too many friendly ships, mostly the battleships, up on the A and B line, and the team have just lost one of those battleships. The Yamato has gone down, so the enemy team now have a kill advantage to go with the 200 point lead that they're currently enjoying. With any luck, they can nail that Goliath. Yep, they got him, the Republic took him out. They're still 100 points behind, of course. Actually, nearly 200 points behind. And here comes the Malta. Notice the Malta is going for the Austin, and the Austin is an AA cruiser. Unlike the Minotaur, which is an AA cruiser by the way, that's what it was designed for, the Austin has the defensive fire consumable. Now, to be fair to the Malta, when he made that attack run on the Austin, he probably didn't know that Akito was here, but he does now. 
So naturally, with the confirmed presence of two anti-aircraft cruisers, one of which has the defensive fire consumable, the Malta will be giving this particular area of the map a wide berth in future, yes? Because carriers respect anti-aircraft firepower. <laughs> I can't even say this with a straight face. <laughs> No, of course he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, the days when aircraft carriers gave a shit about air defences are long gone. He's coming back again, this time with a dive bomber. Well, they're not dive bombers, they're carpet bombers. And he's going straight for the ship on the team with the best anti-aircraft defences. <laughs> The thing about the carpet bombs dropped by the Malta is they're armor-piercing bombs. They don't have a huge amount of penetration, however, but they have enough penetration to be a problem against light cruisers. But it's okay. I mean, they've got fighter cover. They've got the combined anti-aircraft firepower of two of the most heavily armed anti-aircraft cruisers in the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The Austin's like, uh, I'm just going to come over here next to you if that's okay. <laughs> Can't blame him. <laughs> so, with the friendly Shimakaze, and again, you can't really blame him, uh, off hunting, it looks like, enemy battleships down at the other end of the map, they're no closer to flipping this central cap, and they're now even further behind on points, with the enemy team now having a 200-point lead. And the presence of that Republic over there is going to be a significant problem for anybody who gets spotted on this corner, particularly if they're in a light cruiser. The Republic is working his way up the flank. Oh, here comes the Malta again. Daka, 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 daka. It looks like Akito's shooting a lot of aircraft down. He is. He's shooting down the patrol fighters. <laughs> he's doing almost nothing uh, to the rocket attack planes, which have just delivered a 40 rocket strike against a light cruiser with fairly nasty results. And that was through the concentrated firepower of not one but two light cruisers with priority sector and potentially also defensive fire up. The only good news here is that the Shimakazi's managed to beach himself. He's popped his smoke, but it's fairly obvious which way he's going to be going. And now he's dead. And that is great news. Because the enemy team are now a destroyer-free zone. And the Austin has sneaked around incredibly bravely, I have to say, and is now in the process of flipping that cap circle. And uh, spotted on the corner like this with a Republic over there, I think Akito has decided that getting into that cap circle might actually be the safest option. Here's the thing though, the Republic is not alone on that flank. He's not actually the one who's been doing the spotting. Akito thought, understandably, that every time he got spotted on this corner, it was as a result of the Shimakaze popping out and taking a look. That's not actually the case. So the enemy team have a couple of light cruisers of their own. I mean, Akito may have been correct. It may have been the Shimakaze who was doing exactly that and spotting him. And Akito's decision to move in here and back up the Austin behind the island here proved to be remarkably prescient, or however the hell you pronounce that word, because that is the torpedo warning indicator going off behind him. And those are deep water torpedoes. And if he hadn't moved, they would have probably sunk him. And they have just sunk the Moskva, putting the team now nearly 300 points behind. That is the enemy Tier 10 Pan-Asian light cruiser, the Janelle. Oh, spotted by aircraft. Fun for all the family, time to pop that smoke. He is now close enough to the Austin that they can provide mutually supportive overlapping zones of anti-aircraft firepower, which is going to make no difference whatsoever. <laughs> well, he's got shots at the Republic now. Ah, you know what? May as well. That Republic is in a very, very dangerous position. He now has a crossfire basically on the entire team. And if he's not dealt with Sharpish, the enemy team are going to have even more than the 400 point lead that they currently have. Oh, you're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place here. AA guns blazing away, shooting down more pointless patrol fighters. They have no hit points, no armor, and basically. They're just there to make you feel better about firing your anti-aircraft guns. 
the Jinan's been spotted and it looks like the team are waking up to the threat posed by the Republic over there. The friendly carrier is getting involved with his uh, torpedo bombers, which are almost impossible to shoot down, by the way. Uh, they have a large amount of health, lots of armor, and an in-flight repair consumable, because that's a thing. You can kind of understand ships repairing damage mid-battle, because ships did repair damage mid-battle. But I must have been browsing count videos on YouTube during that part in history class at school where they told us about the ground crews that hung onto the wings of strike aircraft as they flew in the battle in order to perform those in-flight repairs that we're suddenly seeing happen. Now come on Jingles, don't be facetious. It's an arcade game, it's not a simulator. Yes, yes, you're right, I know. And it's only fair, of course, because carriers clearly need all the help they can get. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. He's going to take two. Holy shit, that looked like it hurt. Yeah. We forgot that smoke screens are torpedo magnets, didn't we? He's popped his hydro, but of course he only popped the hydro after he saw the torpedoes coming. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, kind of bolting the barn door after the horse has already bolted. Um, well, you know, whatever, fine. Fortunately, the Minotaur does have an excellent heal. I mean, we're not talking Conqueror or Nelson levels of basically being able to print a new ship every time you're about to die. Uh, but it's still very, very efficient at dealing with light damage. The team have managed to claw some kills back. They are, in fact, ahead on kills, although they're still 100 points behind. And oh, here comes the carrier again. <laughs> it's going for the two most dangerous AA cruisers. And those red tracers zipping across the screen mean that the Austin has activated his defensive fire consumable and it's made no difference <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> Honestly, all you can do is laugh at this point. <laughs> yeah. And the Minotaur is an AA cruiser, by the way. I mean, I know it doesn't get the defensive fire consumable. None of the British light cruisers do, but those... The reason the Minotaur's turrets turn as fast as they do, the reason they have such high firing angles, is because this cruiser was designed to be able to track and shoot at fast-moving jets. This was obviously before surface-to-air missiles became a thing, which was why the Minotaur was never actually built. Well, that and because, you know, post-war Britain, we were basically broke and couldn't afford them. Um, but it's, it's not really making that much of a difference, is it? <laughs> Austin blazing away there with his semi-armor piercing. And, um, well, you can obviously tell due to the color of the tracer that the Austin has Bill Halsey as his captain. Here they come again. <laughs> the Malta is finally starting to run out of aircraft. Check that out. It only took 18 minutes. <laughs> 18 minutes of constantly throwing his aircraft against the single biggest anti-air threat in the battle for the Malta to start having to throw depleted squadrons into the fray. Speaking of aircraft carriers, by the way, while things have quietened down for a moment, the friendly Malta tucked in behind the island up to the north. He's got the Jinan going for him. Oh, he could be in trouble now. Let us not forget the Jinan is also a very strong anti-aircraft cruiser. Yeah, no, the friendly carrier's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Why should he be worried? It's just an anti-aircraft cruiser with deep water torpedoes. Uh, things are not going too well for the rest of the team, however. The Republic is down, the friendly one that is. The enemy team have a nearly 300 point lead and are only 77 points away from winning. Here comes the Malta again, but this is fine. There are only two aircraft in this squadron. Come on, Akito, one of the strongest AA cruisers in the game. Can you shoot down two aircraft with your priority sector up? No. <laughs> no, of course you can't. You manage to avoid the torpedoes, though. The good news is, because, you know, why should an AA cruiser with deep water torpedoes be any threat to an aircraft carrier, is that the friendly Malta has sunk the Jinan, buying the team some time. But time is in very short supply. They're still outnumbered. They do have two of the cap circles, but the enemy team are more than 100 points ahead. There's only a minute of the game left. Slava, what are you doing? Why are you trying to win harder? What is going on here? I mean, yes, I know it's a light cruiser. Yes, you're a battleship with 16-inch guns, but you don't have... Yeah, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly, the points difference is not looking quite so bad. 
And Akito's team do have two of the cap circles, with no chance of the enemy team taking any of them. It's three against three. There are 25 seconds remaining of this battle. Here comes the Malta again. Carpet bombers this time. There's the enemy Minotaur. Both teams really need a kill here in order to secure the guaranteed win. The Mecklenburg's an easier kill, but he's out of range. He has to shoot at the Minotaur. The carpet bombers are closing in. The clock is running down. There are barely seconds remaining. The enemy Minotaur has smoked up. They're having to fire blind at him. The Minotaur has shots in the air. The bombers have bombs in the air. The friendly carrier kills the Mecklenburg. A fraction of a second after the battle timer expires. A fraction of a second before the enemy carrier's armor-piercing bombs or the enemy Minotaur's armor-piercing shells wipe Akito off the map. Both teams have 873 points. The Mecklenburg kill didn't count. This battle's a draw. I think that in the seven years I've been playing this game, this is only the third time I have ever seen a draw in World of Warships, because it's so hard to get that result. If this battle had lasted one second longer, the Mecklenburg kill would have counted. Akito's team would have won. If this battle had lasted three seconds longer, Akito's team would have gained more points from the double cap circle advantage. Akito's team would have won. Maybe Akito would have died to the fire from the enemy Minotaur, or the armor-piercing bombs from the enemy Malta. In which case, Akito's team would have still won, because the loss of the Minotaur costs less than the loss of the enemy Mecklenburg, which had already died at that point. But none of those things happened. When you stop to think about it, all of the stars and planets had to be in perfect alignment for Akito's team to not actually win this game. And yet I couldn't really include it in an episode of A Game of Throws because both teams managed to find a way of losing, which is such a vanishingly rare occurrence in World of Warships that it was totally worth showing off today. Of course, if Akito's team had managed to win, if the kill on the Mecklenburg had counted, you would have probably still been watching it because it would certainly then feature amongst one of the closest victories that I've ever seen in A Game of World of Warships. Either way, totally worth watching. And I hope you all enjoyed it because that's it for today. My commiserations to Akito. Um, yeah, that one's tough. <laughs> Better luck next time. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.